17 or so. I like got a chance and I didn't learn much. It wasn't the best atmosphere to learn how to tattoo or anything like that. And uh, I actually got in some trouble when I was younger and, and I got locked up for a little bit of time and I met a guy in there who was a tattoo artist. It just kind of like knew my love for it and he showed me everything he could. Like we would just sit down and go over everything with tattooing and then it was a short stay. Once I got out, I kind of could talk to talk a little bit more, you know what I mean? And I pretty much jumped to apprenticeship and just got hired as a full-time artist. Within probably two years of tattooing, I opened up my first tattoo shop. Having my first shop was I mean, the time of my life and a nightmare at the same time. I owned a shop at 21. I was driving a brand new BMW. I was dating a girl that was like 29, an exotic dancer. <laughs> and uh, I just thought I had made it in life. I mean, that shop, I, I, in my first one, I, I probably made it a year and a half, two years. No idea what I was doing running a shop. For me, it was more a party and a lifestyle, and I was just doing tattoos to make ends meet, pay the bills, you know what I mean? I wasn't interested in the art as much as, like I said, the whole lifestyle of it all. That shop ended up, I mean, my ties with who I was tattooing at the time, uh, the shop got firebombed and they burnt it to the ground. So that was the end of my first shop. Yeah, I mean, like I've always had something inside me that wanted to escape reality and you know what I mean? Like I've just, whatever they say it is, as far as being an act, I've just always had that in me since I was younger. And I, for me, it was just the means of getting it. Once I have it around me and it's going on, I'm 100% gonna partake when I'm younger, you know what I mean? And uh, I mean, I don't wanna blame the girl I was dating, but she was already doing some things that I hadn't seen before, you know what I mean? Doing some drugs that I hadn't seen. And, and it took me a little while, but once, it didn't take much persuading to get me to try it. And I mean, I can remember the first time I tried like hard drugs, opiates, it was just, that was it. It was a wrap for me. It didn't stop for 15 years. I've been clean since uh, November 11th, 2019. That was the last time for me. I had nothing. When I got sober in 2016, I was facing jail time. I didn't own a single thing. When I got sober, I gave it a chance and I kind of built a life for myself. I got a chance at another tattoo shop, started tattooing. I don't know, I, I started slowly just building a life that I should have been doing at 20 years old. And within a year or so, I, I did pretty good. I found a girl, um, my fiance now, and we had a daughter. And I actually, I mean, I got everything back, but I was just missing something on the inside. You know what I mean? Like I had done drugs for 15 years, it's all I knew. And unfortunately, like the pressure of everything got to me and I, I relapsed like at the peak of my career and my life and everything. Fortunately, it didn't last long, you know, and I didn't lose everything. But uh, when I did get sober, I had complications uh, in detox, uh, issues with my heart and stuff like that. And I actually flatlined while I was in detox. And for me, that was like a pivotal moment. Looking back, I wouldn't change anything about my life whatsoever. It's led me to where I am and I'm happier than I could be, you know what I mean? And I think that stuff like that builds character. And uh, I regret the people I hurt along the way, you know what I mean? Family, uh, even relapsing, I regret hurting my fiance and, and my daughter. And luckily she was too young to remember any of it, but uh, I wouldn't change any of it. I think it was a blessing like, me having that experience is the greatest gift I've ever had because I think about it on the daily and it just like changes my whole outlook on everything in life now. It just made me realize how short of a time that you do have here, you know what I mean? And I, every night when I go to sleep now, I, I try not to have any regrets, you know what I mean? Any Anything left unfinished, I guess. I definitely put a lot of work in to stay sober on the daily, but I'm just blessed to have the life I have. I don't know why I made it out of it and, and so many friends of mine didn't, you know? Um, I try not to think about it too much and just appreciate what I have. I definitely didn't get sober on my own. I got involved with a fellowship that, that showed me how to do what I have to do to stay sober and, and changed my outlook on life. And uh, 
I mean, my biggest thing that I've learned in sobriety is not to think about myself. It's never about me. I look at the life I live and all the negativity, and the only good that I can find in all of that is that I'm more qualified to help somebody that's going through it now. You know what I mean? It makes me more relatable to them to be able to sit down and know exactly where somebody that's in active addiction is sitting. For me, it's just like being able to use all of that for good and help somebody not have to go through the shit I went through is what keeps me sober on the daily. I'm almost to my 20th year now, and I spent 10 years tattooing just biker style tattoos, like anything that came in, small walking, stuff like that. I honestly just cruised through tattooing. Like I learned how to technically tattoo and like the technical application of it, but not really the art of it, not the art of designing tattoos and, and just everything that I love about tattooing now. I can say that in the past year and a half of working at the lab, that that's where I really took it to the level that I'm at now and got any sort of notoriety from it. I definitely, I can remember even just three years ago, talking with my fiance about a guy tattooing professional athletes and just saying like, I can't imagine tattooing athletes for a living. You know what I mean? And uh, she's the one that reminded me of that. And then now, I mean, like, I never thought my career would be where it is today. It's nowhere near where I want it to be, of course. But uh, the level of that being at this shop and around these artists, it's five of the best artists on the East Coast work here. You know what I mean? And that's not including myself. It's just everyone else. But being around them is what allowed me to take everything to the next level. I've learned so much from the social media aspect to the art form, to just everything, how to, how to deal with customers and pricing and scheduling. It's like, it's almost like I apprenticed for the past year and a half here and learned more than I did for 18 years of tattooing. It's funny because, I mean, I saw guys around me tattooing athletes and stuff, and I'm just like tattooing and posting my work. And like, you can't just post your tattoos and cross your fingers, hope one of the athletes see it, you know what I mean? And uh, COVID happened. The shop, uh, we had to quarantine. The shop shut down for uh, three months. And I went home from work that day and my fiance, I got a daughter and she's pregnant at the time. And she just said, like, what are you gonna do? And I, like always, I said, I'm gonna figure it out, you know? But in my head, I had no idea what I was gonna do. And then that night, I, uh, I messaged, you're allowed to message 15 people that you don't follow on Instagram. So I messaged 15 athletes and was just like, hey, this is my name, this is my work. If you're ever interested, hit me up. And she kind of like laughed at me, but I, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know in my head what's the worst that's gonna happen. They're not gonna respond. And I woke up the next morning and had three messages back from them. And I think I ended up tattooing my first athlete that weekend. I set it up and honestly, I tattooed that first athlete. He's an amazing dude and, and well-liked in the, in the NFL. And he just kind of opened the doors for me to other athletes. They saw his work and it just kept snowballing from there, you know? And uh, now it's, that was for the Baltimore Ravens. And now it's multiple different teams, you know, in the whole NFL, it just keeps going more and more. I tattooed a Baltimore Raven, so it was in Baltimore City where I was tattooing him. And uh, I took the same tunnel, the same ridge that I traveled down morning and night for years to get high, you know? And I was going down there for a different reason. And it was just, it was real humbling for me. It's probably one of the best experiences that I've had tattooing. Uh, the athlete that I tattooed has like a penthouse in, in Baltimore City and it just overlooks the whole city. And I, uh, I don't know, I guess I was just taken back. I could look out the windows of his, his house and just see the streets that I used to buy drugs on and the streets, the corner that I sat on at one time, just thinking that my life was in shambles, no, no idea where to go. You know what I mean? And it was almost like when I was looking out the window, I could see myself down there, sitting there. It was something that I would have never appreciated if I wasn't sober. You know what I mean? If I was if I was under the influence at the time, I, I just, you miss the little shit. You're so wrapped up and selfish that you just, 
I would have never took the time to stand by the window and just feel that feeling. I have my goals in life where I want to go and uh, they're always extreme. And I, I have a lot of things that I want to do, but at the same time, I never thought I'd get to where I am now. And uh, a lot of this stuff came on fast. A lot of this stuff's came in the last year. I've achieved a lot, you know? So it's almost like right now, it's, it's just like, I'm kind of still in shock that I am where I am and trying to get my feet on the ground and figure the direction I want to take it because I never thought I'd even be standing right here, you know? So it's, I have directions I'd like to go. Um, I'm hard on myself. You know, I've been tattooing a long time now. Part of being hard on myself is when something good happens or I, I get notoriety in tattooing or, or somebody, you know, just I have an event in tattooing and something to be proud of when a trophy or tattoo a certain person. I always, instead of appreciating that moment, I think in my head, what if this is the peak, you know? I don't give myself enough time to celebrate my, my wins because I worry that it could be downhill from there. So then I'm back to the grinding. I mean, you just sit around and wait for something to happen. It's never going to happen. I'm not really somebody to wish for shit to happen to me. Um, I mean, it could be just my experiences in life. I never just had something good accidentally happen to me.